I'm always more like a, a um, bottom-up designer. I mean, I don't. I, I usually say that's bottom-up and top-down. That means if you bottom-up, it means you're starting. What is the minimum you can do, and just try to add and try to make a function game. And most, and the other one is, oh, the top-down is. Uh, everything I want to put into a game and start and then try to make it. <laughs> and, and then you have right. a lot of stuff. Welcome to Cardboard Creations, where we discuss the process, techniques, and inspiration for designing board games. I'm your host, Candice Harris, and I'm super stoked to be here today with Per Sylvester to find out how Brian Baru, High King of Ireland, was created. But first, let's jump into a quick overview of how Brian Baru works. Brian Baru is a card drafting, trick taking, area majority game for three to five players where you strive to unite Ireland under your domain, securing control through might, cunning, and matrimony. Over a series of rounds, Players draft cards and then take turns playing cards and tricks to perform a variety of actions such as gaining money, expanding into new towns, advancing on the marriage track, taking Viking Raider tokens, placing influence in the church area, and gaining control of the active town. After all players take an action each round, there is an upkeep phase to resolve the marriage, battle, and church areas. Then players claim regions where they control a majority of towns. When there are no more marriage cards left at the end of the upkeep phase, the game is over and final scores are tallied. Players score points for claim tokens, renowned tokens, having presence in different regions, and more. The player with the most points is the winner. Hi Pear, welcome to the show. Hi, glad I could be here. Thank you for inviting me. Oh yeah, oh yeah, totally. So I, I first discovered your work uh, with The King is Dead. I love that game, so I was so happy that a second edition was printed because I couldn't get a copy of the first edition. Um, and then like, I guess a year or so later, Polynesia came out and I actually hosted someone who was demoing it for Gen Con or something that year. And I was like, this is really cool. And I looked it up and I'm like, <laughs> oh, it's the same designer as The King is Dead. <laughs> Noted, noted. <laughs> and then from there, when I heard about uh, Brian Baru, I was like so excited. And, um, you know, I've played it a bunch and I really enjoy it. I think it has such an interesting mix of mechanisms with the airy majority, card drafting, and trick taking. So, what initially inspired you to create Brian Baru? Okay, I don't know. I, I tried to find out where I first read about Brian Baru as a person, <laughs> but I <laughs> don't know. I can't quite remember. And it was very, very, very long time ago. And I first my first prototype of it was not good at all, so I put it aside. And then um, while on my way to work, I had this question that, oh, what if um, you do a trick-taking game, but every card you play is also do the action, has, has an action on it, and you have to... Um, balance the trick taking and the action selection. And uh, yeah, during my commute, I was thinking about that. And that's often how this idea comes. What if questions is something I very interesting or I like to experiment with stuff. And okay. uh, like like in The King is Dead, where I thought, what happens if you only have eight actions and you don't get them back? And like, <laughs> and like as most other games where you get your action cards back. So yeah, that was the main first idea. And, I, uh, and then I looked on the former stuff that I made and didn't go anywhere. And I found this Brian Burrow prototype from the first selection and I said, oh, I have a good map. And <laughs> and uh, so I realized that, okay, that's also nice because Brian Burrow is known for three things, for this marriaging of his family members and for fighting the Vikings and, uh, and forging this uh, the, the big connection with the church back then. So that naturally was just like the three suits in a trick-taking game so that and then developed from there pretty much wow. for a long long time <laughs> so yeah so when was that just out of curiosity that you kind of started uh you know coming up with that original idea and then you know revisiting it a bit 
oh, it must be at least eight, nine years because there was uh, in between, I had the, the I had a much, much more complicated area majority system based on the way they actually voted back then, because they had like this, um, a voting sounds like a democracy, but it was not, it was like the oligarchy, but they like within their clan, they chose like a representative and within the representatives, they chose like who's the, the tribe leaders from these clans. And so there were layers and layers and layers. And I tried to copy that, but that was, um, that I did allow for more like or oh, offering you the city that you don't have that you don't cannot need because it's so way down so many levels but it mostly confused people so I had to take all of that out and basically design everything new around it <laughs> and um, so that took a long time and then you know, I, I had long breaks of where I didn't do anything where I couldn't really move forward with it gotcha. so I think it's maybe eight, nine years, but it sounds that also sounds longer than it actually was because I was working as a design and probably didn't work on that for a year. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Cool. So how did you get from your initial idea um, into a playable prototype? Um, normally I do like this. When I have an idea, I write it down. And then if I really like the idea, um, the first I write everything down and then I like the ideas and I try, try to come up with a concept which is a bit higher where I say okay this is what I want to put in the game and this is what I envision it roughly to be of course I didn't and then I try to go to the prototype set pretty sh as fast as possible with just like mock-up papers and cards and maybe write something on a normal deck of cards or something like that just to see a feel what I can do and just sit down with it and try to guess like brainstorming what would work. And uh, when that all works fine, <laughs> I try to <laughs> come up with the first rule draft and then I play with against myself a lot. And uh, yeah, so that's, I don't know how long that takes in this particular game now, but that's normally how the stages are. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, so, so at what point did you start playtesting with other people and you know what was your playtesting process like yeah when, after when i play te finished playtest with myself I thought, okay that seems to work at least initially um then i usually try to bring it as back then i had a group of game designers it's a bit difficult now with covid it like sort of went away right. but we had this <laughs> regular game design meetup where oh, cool. i normally bring it and then i get already see if it works as intended or would have to work. And um, in this case, there were some aspects that worked and some that don't normally, and I tried to come up with rules to fix it. And yeah, and I brought it for a lot of playtests for a long time, always changing in and out stuff until I realized that this, one of the biggest hurdles would be this majority system. And then I had to remove basically the engine <laughs> that it thing. kind of started on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I still have the trick-taking aspect, but the majority <laughs> stuff, and that always is a point where it's a bit of a letdown. So you normally I put them on ice until I have a new idea, and then I started working after a couple of months again, and again tried with other people. I went to public play testings and changed a lot. And uh, that, uh, there are a few few games of mine that has changed as much as Brian Baru. So the longest, I think the only other game that has a similar long take was Wiesn das Volk. Every other one oh, nice. were much, much easier and faster <laughs> in designing. <laughs> I really love how the, uh, the different tracks and those different areas, like how you integrated the marriage track and the Viking Raider tokens and the the whole concept of having those monastery rings and competing in the church i think that's such an interesting aspect to the game and it really kind of makes it like you have to like watch what other players are doing because you're always competing in these different areas how did you come up with those mechanisms uh, i worked from the theme and like i said um it was clear that to me that this would be the three main alleys or suits in this case and um so i thought okay with a marriage track obviously only one can win that's um <laughs> also would yeah. be weird uh so it has to be a track where someone wins in the end and one of the orig and one original prototype it was even that um the other progress is lost for the others i mean they get a small consolation prize but they lose all progress because it's a new oh. um partner but 
Osprey changed that to be a bit less frustrating, I suppose, uh, which is fine. And um, then there was the Vikings. It's so was okay, that's more important. I want to have a dynamic where you try to overbid each other, really, like, oh, you have more than me. But it depends how it falls out if you manage to fight or not. And if someone is just fighting a bit and then nobody else, won, then has to be a penalty. So that's, right. yeah, so it's basically the theme. And, um, and yeah, for the for the cloisters, uh, for the church track or church area, I wanted to have a different system. So I was thinking, what can I, else I can do? And then putting this houses there. So it's, yeah, I mean, it's as reviewers keep on pointing out, there are three different tracks that just look different. But I think it does make a difference if they are, if, 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 they're, between, if they're functionally the same, but the work as a different because you take tokens or you put something, um, it does make, it does feel a bit different. If it would be just three tracks beside each other, it would look much more, much less thematic and much more dry, I suppose. I think it's so awesome. And just like the fact that the monastery tokens double your influence scoring of your towns that you're putting out. I love how those three areas kind of play into the whole game and it just gives this really twist on the uh, area majority. Yeah, I mean, uh, with the with the church track, I was thinking, what, how does church influence translate to what I want to do? And that doubling influence points in majority games is a thing I think that comes very natural and um, doesn't have to be introducing new elements. So I can circle back to what I already have. Um, I, I'm always more like a, a um, bottom-up designer. I mean, I don't. I, I usually say that's bottom-up and top-down. That means if you bottom-up, it means you're starting what is the minimum you can do and just try to add and try to make a function game. And, most, and the other one is, oh, the top down is everything I want to put into a game and start and then try <laughs> to make it. <laughs> and, and then you have right. like a lot of stuff. And um, I think I'm more like a, from the bottom up and try to use few mechanisms and few things. But that's a, that's a personal, personal preference and um, May have something to do with them. Lazy with prototype busting. I want. I want to have some, make so many elements so that's easy. <laughs> <laughs> makes sense. It makes sense. And you know, whatever you're doing, it's working. So, um, <laughs> awesome. What do you think was your biggest challenge that you faced, like throughout the whole design process? No, well, apart from this majority system to get out of, there was a um, part which I would have. Also, the, the whole. A Viking and marrying the Viking princess was something that I really wanted, but I was not sure how to implement it. And there were various iterations where you could really play as as a Viking. Where the Vikings really are more like a faction, stronger faction, and and they could overrun the board. So there were like an ex, extra victory conditions happening and things like that. And um, but it also made the game very volatile. Sometimes it's swung in one direction pretty much and without giving players had to play against that in some instances which is not good so yeah that was basically in this game except for the trick tracking mechanism everything went back and forth and sideways and <laughs> well, <laughs> it was not a smooth in design. the end <laughs> it worked out yeah. <laughs> Cool. Um, and then were there any like aha moments where you were like, ah, Eureka, we got got something good happening? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, when when I did put in this simpler system and it worked pretty much right away with some tweaks and of course not, it was a bit unbalanced, in this, but sure. really, but the main thing worked. That was really like a very positive thing where they could go, oh, it works that way. And uh, back then before I also had went in, like I said, with different victory conditions and different passes, mm -hmm. different direction. And um, when I did this engine, I started to put everything looping back to that. So like it's now, which is just, this helps us help you on the board. And that really worked and was elegant. So, yeah, I think you feel the game is very elegant. And um, and then, yeah, you it's very satisfying as it works out. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, totally. How were the art and graphic design decisions made? Um, well, that's mainly the publishers. But in this case, I um, well, during my, my research for this topic, I came across a web comic by, uh, called Brian Baru with Deirdre. So I thought, oh, it would be nice if she would be 
the graphic design if you can ask her and and they did and and she won did do that graphic design and she did a good work because she was oh, yeah cool. she knows obviously the topic so that helps so that was that's awesome. yeah normally i don't give i don't give normally much input into graphic design because i'm not i don't have a good visual imagination i, I cannot imagine how things look later so i don't i'm not with graphic designs that you say oh what do you what's your art direction i think i know what i want as a feel but i don't know how to execute that i'm not a graphic designer in any case when you were had your prototype version like what did you do because I, I think the iconography on the cards especially is like super clear it's like you once you learn what those different couple of different icons are it's like it just it clicks really well so did you have any iconography like um you know, temporary icon icons on the the action cards uh, when you were prototyping, or did you like write text? Or well, I try to avoid text because I mean it's as especially on cards because it always takes always a time to read, and um, it, yeah, it's you often have you tends to lead to rule questions where you're not. And then not this biggest icon is always clear. It doesn't mean that. So I tried to use icons, but yeah, Osprey does did um, change the icons because I mean they're much. That's what they do. They're very good work. They've done. Mm -hmm. It's the same with like Last Expedition, which has a lot of icons. They manage a very well good translation to the how it actually looks. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, cool. So like, like so I, I know how it's supposed to look like, but I'm not. <laughs> That's not I, your, I, yeah, your area. I, of I, I try to find what I can in clip arts or something. And yeah. Just use that and uh, Google pictures or something. Cool, cool. I usually ask how you came up with the name for the game. Um, but uh, I guess in this case, uh, did were you toying around with any other titles for the game? Or was it just like, this is a game about Brian Boru, so. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, it was, it was one of us few titles that hasn't changed if I'm not mistaken I think it's most of my titles did change during one point or from the publisher's end or whatever but um Brian Baru was always Brian Baru because it's, yeah it's about him yeah <laughs> <laughs> they didn't change that so that's was and I like having person's names on the boxes instead of place names I think it's sure. um I think it gives more it's more interesting yeah, and it's, it, it also helps that it's really catchy because there's alliteration with the two Bs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> right, that's <good>. yeah. <laughs> that's cool. Um, so when did you know that the game was finished? Uh, yeah, it's it's always a difficult point to say, okay, now the game is finished. Um, I had the f I've thought I finished the game about four times or so, six times, and then... Um, other people say no, it's not. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, well, we don't like this one, or we don't like that aspect. When I feel after a play test, or to, normally you're thinking, okay, now that's that felt really good. That feels like a good product. It's interesting, and it's it is what I wanted from the game. Mm -hmm. And if then a second proto, and then if another um, play test also works like that, then I think, okay, this is, seems to be. A good thing that I can send off to the publishers. I mean, depends a bit on the idea and the game, because some designs and this, including, does leave a bit of leeway which the publishers can tweak without any problems if they put in port to their taste, which Osprey did. I mean, mm -hmm. they did work on it still, um, which is totally fine. And um, yeah, so it depends cool. a bit. But yeah, normally if I'm if I'm satisfied, that's my gut feel. Cool, cool. And did you? Out of curiosity, um, did you know, hey, I'm going to pitch this game to Osprey, or did you shop it around to like other publishers too? I mean, there was a very early, there was an early iteration with the whole system that I sent someone else, somewhere else first because I didn't have a contact in Osprey yet. But when I when it came back and I worked again for another year, couple of years, um, it was natural fit because obviously it's also an Irish game and... Um, yeah, back then the one of the developers is, was Duncan Malloy, who is Irish, so he obviously nice. was very Good interested fit. in doing this, even if he left then Osprey. Uh, yeah, so that was natural fit, and I think it works better. It's a theme that's better with a British publisher than with a German one, I think, because it's an Irish theme. Yeah, cool, cool. 
Um, so do you have any advice, Pear, for anyone who might be interested in designing a game that has uh, area majority as a core mechanism? With area control, you always have to find a balance between um, not too much changes, but also not not a runaway leader problem. It's, it's easy to have. It, it, it's always there's a, two sides of it. it. Sometimes it's too easy to be ahead and then never be shellish again, which is boring. On the other hand, it's often some majority games uh, just so much back and forth that you never be sure, and it's just getting too much. It doesn't. The number of tokens or whatever you put in it should always be limited, um, because else you would have to calculate so much. If I put this there, if I put there, that's too much back and forth. You can nobody can process it, and it just gets mm. muddled. That would be one. And always think about a ties. It's the other one. It's, <laughs> a majority you always have ties, and you always have to think about <laughs> How ties. How are you gonna handle that, right? <laughs> yeah, that's always the first. Well, that's the first question, but that's one of the first things you should think about if you can do it, something interesting or is it even better? Awesome. Uh, well, thanks, Pear. Thanks so much for joining me on uh, Cardboard Creations and you know giving me the backstory of Brian Borough, High King of Ireland. You know, between that, I'm looking forward to playing it more. I've probably played it about a half dozen times at this point. Um, I also have Lost Expedition on my shelf and Village Green, which I haven't played yet, uh, but I've played Polynesia a couple times, King is Dead a bunch. And how could I not mention Versen Das Volk, <laughs> which we just did. I just did a live stream of with Fred Serval uh, a couple a couple weeks ago, and uh, I'm really looking forward to digging into that game. Your your uh, your designs are always just very interesting, and they resonate with me. Uh, so yeah, thank you again for being here. Yeah, thank you for the invitation. I mean, I always, always like it. I'm always, a strange feeling some of people like my games. I was <laughs> very happy, makes me, like, makes me also very happy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mainly design them for myself, so it's... <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if other people enjoy them, it's always very, very, makes me very happy, but it's also kind of on. <laughs> Un unreal is probably the better word. It's unreal. It's unreal. Well, it's... yeah, well, you, I'm sure you have a ton of fans out there. Um, <laughs> So, and then like one, as a, just a final question, um, is there anything that you're working on lately that you can, um, that you'd like to share or anything else you'd like to bring up related to Brian Brew? I'm working on a project right now, which I'm, I think, not allowed to talk about yet, uh, because it's a sequel to one of my games. Um, uh, so that I, my first sequel. <laughs> um, so I don't want, there's a game that I hope a publisher will pick up, which is a, a two player cooperative game about the uh, Northern Ireland conflict, about the Good Friday Agreement, to be precise. Uh, so I'm, yeah, that's something I'm hope will come to fruition one day because it's something I'm really, really proud of and really. It's also a bit, yeah, it's unusual the game, I'd say. So I'm not sure if I can manage. <laughs> <laughs> I love unusual but... games, so I can't <laughs> wait to check it out. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks again for being here, Pear. Thanks for the invite. Thank you all for watching Cardboard Creations. Hopefully it's been as inspiring and fascinating for you as it has been for me. And remember, the only way to get something done is to start doing it.